When I got home, before I got out of the car, a Facebook inbox peeped. It was from someone who just said, we don't discuss what happened at the mountain with anyone. Not even our loved ones or they die. I found a huge bag of money. The bag was the size of a coffin and it was filled with money. I drove around to strangers, giving them money and sometimes buying them food and clothes. The ritual had worked. I had one, two, three, four, five, six. This video is opening old wounds, guys. So if you've been part of this journey with me ever since I started in this YouTube channel, you would know the very first video or the second one where I said I used to be a Sangoma. In that video, I'm actually sharing my testimony. There's a part in that video where I talk about my aunt um, who went to Ugutwala or this ritual for money and that made the family lose a family member every year hello welcome to my channel my name is nindy sherry's in this channel we expose the devil and we share our testimonies to give glory to god so in today's video i am going to play a video this person who did a money ritual and just the whole process guys listening and the suffering that he is going through right now and it can only be something that can only be solved by God. So I am going to end this by prayer because I really think we need to pray. Pray for this person. Pray for our families. And I always emphasize, guys, that we need to pray. Like pray without season because it is only when you are protected by the Holy Spirit that these things do not work. So I don't think um, um, these spirits or the devil and these angomas, um, they will normally go to a family that prays because they know they cannot penetrate. God protect us, the Holy Spirit. And that's the only thing that these spirits are scared of. Guys, I want you to make a promise to me and God that you will always pray for your family. I know some of you are not going to church. I know some of you are not taking your spiritual life serious but this is serious like the spirits are everywhere guys the money that we are using um our place of school uh, universities in our homes our husbands are getting attacked so many things are happening and some of you are not supposed to die but you die because you do not have god who will protect you so i want you to listen to this video and just yeah take notes and think and then next time read your bible if you do not have a bible guys go and buy a bible or start using the one from your phone until you get a bible let your house be filled with the presence of god because these things cannot go to a house like that so without wasting time let me just go to my laptop and then we will play this video and then guys yeah this is not nice this is truly not nice so let's just play this video a few years ago uh, i used to work as a drug smuggler I would smuggle drugs into different countries. As I was smuggling some drugs into Nigeria, uh, I was arrested. As I was in jail uh, in Nigeria, I met someone in the holding cell who, who gave me their number. The person said to me that um, he deliberately or he gets uh, arrested purposely just to see people in the holding cell and then he gives them his number so that he can assist them with the, with the luck or with the voodoo's to get uh, some money. He also gave me a small stone and he told me to put it under my tongue. When I was going for my bail hearing, the judge will say what I wanted to hear. And then the judge did say what I wanted to hear. Um, he gave me his Facebook name so that if I lose his numbers, I can find him easily on the Facebook. But to this day, I still think the guy was a ghost. When I was moved from my holding cell, I said goodbye. But the officers looked at me like I was crazy. Uh, but something was holding me back from contacting him on Facebook. I had searched for him and found his account, but I was skeptical on saying something to him. Eventually, I even started dreaming about him. In the dream, I was very rich and I was living the life of my dreams. We know who we are. We know who we belong to. We know the power that we have through the Holy Spirit. So if this person was found in jail while at his lowest moment, you know, when you're far away from your country, this person is from South Africa. I had to cut the video because it was going to be long. This person is from South Africa, going to Nigeria and finding yourself with strangers who are speaking different languages. 
you obviously are at a vulnerable stage where you're just weak and you're just taking anything that you can take and someone promising you freedom. So there are different types of freedom. The freedom that will take you to God, the freedom that will truly give you peace, the freedom that will truly give you freedom. Because he was out of jail, but not out of jail. He actually went into a worse jail than ever. So let's just continue so that you can see how this person ended in the worst case more than jail. Finally, I sent the message and I was replied with a location, uh, a date and then a time. And there were instructions telling me what to bring. So I got scared because now nothing was said to me after that. The scariest part was that the location was at a mountain. So I went there for the initiation into, they call it uh, Ugutwala. Uh, the scariest part was that the location was at a mountain. And we were once told that the... There's no coming back and I don't have to mention the mountain or anything that's going to happen there to anyone. But it's somewhere in the north of South Africa. When I arrived there, I looked at the Sangoma and uh, there were so many Sangomas uh, in there and they were entertainers as well. They don't live there but they all went there for, for some rituals. It was packed and it's funny how much uh, we had so many people there. There were many people. But it was extremely quiet. And so we did that Ogutwala and then they do something to your brain. You get to trust and believe everything they tell you. You know, I mean, I didn't know like these people or anything that was happening there. But I knew that uh, people I'm meeting up with are very dangerous and they're in a dangerous place. I went there with hesitation and I was thinking twice all the way there. I was taken by one man into an isolated place and then he ordered me to take off my clothes and made me jump the, the fire he was sitting next to. I jumped the fire until I got uh, tired and I felt very weak. Then he told me to choose any of my nipples and he was going to poke it with a needle. Uh, he said my nipple represented my mom. The other one will represent my dad. Then poked my, nip my right nipple with, the, with, with, with that needle he was holding in his hand. And well, the needle was covered with blood. I felt numb and very, very weak the same time he pulled the needle out. And somehow I started hearing a very familiar voice screaming for help. And then it went quiet. Then I was told to lay down and rest. When I wake up, I should go home and not look back at all. I walked that very scary mountain alone, but I was fooled by the creepy sounds of hands clapping. When I got home, before I got out of the car, a Facebook inbox beeped. It was from someone who just said, we don't discuss what happened. At the mountain with anyone not even our loved ones or they die when i walked into the house i realized that my extended family members all of them who didn't live far were there and then it was quite a moment when i was hit by death then i sat down my aunt then said to me uh, they have been trying to call me but my phone was off she further said my mom was bit by a snake on the nipple uh, while they were in the fields harvesting Apparently, my mom tripped and fell, and a snake bit her on the nipple, and she passed away on the spot. It hit me very hard, because it was at that very moment I realized that uh, this thing was really happening. The nipple I chose was obviously my mom, and it meant I had ended my mom's life. It was at that moment that I hated my life more than anything. My mom's funeral was the hardest thing I, I ever had to go through. It was very painful. I tried to be strong. But a part of me wanted to confess. Is it worth it to kill a family member for money? I mean, how do you even go on living your life knowing that someone died? Even if these things were not haunting him. Is it worth it to continue living knowing that you killed your mother? And some people kill their children. Some people kill their fathers. So many things are happening out there because someone likes money, because someone loves money more than anything. Can you see now why the Bible says that, that money is the root of all evil? So there's nothing wrong with money, but then because we love money more than God, that's why we end up in situations like that. If you do not have, do not covet what your neighbor has. You just have to accept and be content with what you have. And sometimes you'll find a person who has just an average life. Kids are doing well. Everything is just so perfect. But then we want more. We keep wanting more. And it never ends. We always want more. So guys, is it worth it to continue living knowing that you killed your mother? Aye, guys. It is not worth it.
Guys, this is scary knowing that this place is in South Africa. I mean, he did say the northern part of South Africa. How many mountains are there? Let's just do a research and see which mountain is somewhere in north because he didn't specify that mountain. So guys, you need to be careful because this place exists. And the fact that there were so many Sangomas, guys. So you keep going to that Sangoma and you do not know. And I always say you do not know what that Sangoma did. Because, guys, whatever they're going to give you, you cannot trust. It is something that was sacrificed for a reason. The more they give you something, the more you will keep coming back and the more your life will end. A few weeks after burying my mom, I received a very big bag of money. I woke up to an instruction that I, I should go to my mom's grave at night and it must be exactly at midnight that I must go there uh, and there was a gift waiting for me. I did as the instruction said. I found a huge bag of money. The bag was the size of a coffin and it was filled with money. Another instruction was that um, I have two options. I can use the money for whatever I want and not share with anyone. But I'd lose another family member when the money runs out so I can get another share. Or I can share it with a total stranger, anyone I can meet on the street. Uh, just a random giving. But giving that money to those people would be redirecting the sacrifice to them. This meant that uh, me giving the money to random people... Uh, I would be giving death the direction to their homes. When the money runs out, death comes in. So I had to choose which person uh, I should send death to. Redirecting the case to somebody else who doesn't know, who didn't even choose. You're protecting your family and taking the case into someone's house. That hard, guys. It is so painful what people do in this world just for money. Guys, Things are being sent left and right into our lives. We do not know. And the only way that we can see these things is by prayer, is by trusting God. Because God sees everything. God knows what is happening and God will protect you and even reveal to you what is happening. So, guys, I will constantly say, pray without ceasing. Now, look at these two choices. The first choice was every year when the money runs out, you have to choose another family member. And the second option was give the money to other people. My aunt chose the first option because every single year someone died. Another year it was my mother. The following year, I think after two years, it was my father. It was my father and then my uncles. My dad had like eight to nine, I think. Yes, uncles. But then all of them passed. Not all of them. I think we left with one. All of the, the other nine guys passed on because of this ritual. So guys, we really need to protect our families. And the money stopped only when I prayed, only when I received salvation. And if you haven't watched that video, I still say go and watch. So you can see how I fought that part, guys. So yeah, let me just play clips of someone who's constantly giving money to people. Am I saying Obi Pagati is one of the people who actually went to these rituals? I do not know. But then this looks familiar. So let's just play these clips and then you will understand what I'm talking about. I <laughs> yes, it has been some support, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, man, your service is good, brother. Take this. Ah, uh, yeah, but uh, that's a thousand show. <laughs> show, uh, brother. My All right, show, brother. Serious. Serious, that's yours. This is mine. One, two, three, five. Yeah. Ah, uh, come on, chief. That's Tell yours. Tell me you're lying. No, this is it. Uh, <laughs> show, <laughs> show what brother. Is, what do you have to get this? Uh, no, I know. I'm just checking your service. Ah, uh, thanks so much. <laughs> All right, show, brother. I chose giving it to other people because I couldn't stand losing another family member. This meant that uh, my family won't be affected anymore. I became a giver, the community's hero, uh, who just drove around. I drove around to strangers, giving them money and sometimes buying them food and clothes. The ritual had worked. This went on for, for years until it, I started seeing shadows of the people whom I have given money. They would come to my room every night. I thought maybe I was bewitched. I would have started to go crazy until I realized later on that uh, 
I I needed some help. I consulted and I was told that uh, those spirits or those shadows I'm seeing in my room are uh, all those people I, I I gave money to because I have sacrificed with their lives. I still live with those shadows and sometimes they make so much noise that I would run out of my own house like a crazy person. I am so tired of living this life and I want to reverse the ritual. I want to live a normal life again, but now I don't know how. All right, guys, this is the end of the video. I'd like to leave you with a scripture before I pray. So if you go to um, John 8, verse 32, it says, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Reassure us during that full moment. So if you are in this situation, just know the only one who can save you it is God himself. So get yourself in prayer, start fasting and then declare and have faith in God. Repent and ask God for forgiveness and then you will be saved because you only need salvation. You need that heart of stone that says it is okay for other families to die, but not my family to die. You need that heart of stone to be changed and be a heart of flesh. That can only happen through the Holy Spirit and it can only be done by God. So I am now going to pray and then we will close this video. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. Thanking you, Father, for this day, O oh Lord Mighty. You are truly awesome for you to reveal this to people, O oh Lord Mighty. Finally, I understand what happened to my family, O oh Lord Mighty. I pray protection over everyone who is watching right now for them and their families, O oh Lord Mary. And I know, Father, that your power is beyond measure, O oh Lord. You are able, Father, to penetrate to the person who's watching this video and their families and even the next generations in their family, O oh Lord. Mary, I put a hedge that is full of protection, shedding the blood that was shedding the cross for our freedom. Thank you so much, Father, that you see everything and you are continuously protecting us. Lord, I pray for each and every one of us to go to our Bibles because you did say that the word of God it is uh, the sword of the spirit. I pray, Father, that you protect each and every one of us and we can only depend on you. We do not depend on anyone else. We only depend on you. And I pray all of this in the name that is above all other names, which is the name of Jesus. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you've learned something from this video. Remember, let's pray without ceasing.